Are your sister locks dry? Your scalp is itchy and tight? Is it flaking? Does it just feel crazy? I got to tell you, the only issue I had with my locks early on was dandruff and a flaky scalp. I never really recall having a lot of itching, but I know I hear people talking about itching a lot and I've had people to ask me about it here on the channel and as well my daughter who just had traditional locks installed a few months ago is always talking about her scalp itching. So I wanted to put together a short little video to give you some ideas or some things that you can do if you're experiencing a little bit of itchiness, dryness, tight scalp, it just feels really uncomfortable. Now as you listen to the video, I want you to listen to it in the context of what your hair was like before you actually had sister locks because sometimes those problems sort of carry over and it's not so much the sister locks. When I moved here from the north down to Atlanta, my hair took a hit because of the difference in the quality of water and I started to experience a lot of um, dry scalp and dandruff and so forth and so on. I kind of got used to it. I didn't really address it until I got sister locks because when I had the sister locks it became unsightly and something you can see. Now you can look at my scalp at any given time and it looks great and it's been like this for years. The first two things I'm going to recommend if you're a little more settled into your journey meaning one plus years and if you're not I'm going to tell you you know, um, you make your own decision about this. I used oils from day one. Uh, I didn't use what I use now. I now make my own oils and I didn't suffer as a result of it. And so what I have done is use a particular shampoo that I make and to use a particular oil for maintenance in my hair, which I haven't used as much um, interestingly enough lately because I'm, I'm trying some different things as, as it relates to my sister locks but anyway I'm gonna put the link to both of those videos in the description because first and foremost the two more long-term things I'm gonna recommend that you do for your hair if you're dealing with these dry scalp issues number one diet number two essential oils you can use the essential oils on your hair regardless of really what your loctician says because they are not fatty oils when I talk about the essential non-fatty oils, I'm talking about things like rosemary oil, cloves, tea tree, things like that. They're not really fatty oils. The fatty oils are the jojoba oils, the avocado, the almond oils, the oils that are literally fatty. Those are the ones that if you want to listen to your locticians, don't use those because for some people that can cause slipping and unraveling and so forth. Although it didn't really do it anything with my locks, but make them healthy long and able to take one dye after the other time and time again so the first thing diet diet you got to address your diet if you want to deal with this long term not getting enough water is problematic not getting enough zinc not getting enough sulfur not getting enough omega-3s um zinc comes from nuts you eat a lot of nuts is good for you the water quality is important um, the better the quality of water, the more absorb, uh, absorption you're going to get from the cells. The more the cells are hydrated, the better your hair is going to look and feel and retain moisture. Now, when we talk about water quality, purified water, I, I have a, 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 it's not a Kangen water machine, but it's a Jupiter Athena. This was a high quality machine. I spent a couple thousand dollars on when I was really, really highly into drinking alkaline water. I drank nothing but alkaline water for a few years. I only more recently stopped, maybe within the last couple years, I use that same machine to purify my water. However, now I go to the oldest well in the country, which luckily happens to be located in Georgia, and it is the only water source that still has high amounts of sulfur in it. This water not only heals your body, but I don't know. I know it's got to be doing wonders for my hair. I've been going there and getting this water not very long, but it's making me feel good in my body every time I go to the well. You hear, you meet amazingly conscious people, but you hear these amazing stories of what this healing water is doing, whether it's cured somebody's cancer, stopped their, their gout, or, you know, kept them from having to have their, their leg, I was getting ready to say, excavated, <laughs> amputated. Very seriously, this is healing water, and it was a water that, uh, on the land taken from the Native Americans, or they eventually sold it with the clause of this water having to remain free to the public. It is not free in the sense that you do have to pay to get into this particular park to get the water. So they have managed to 
uh, monetize it. But anyway, this is amazing water. If you can't get that kind of water, which you likely cannot, then you need to drink high quality water. The more you can stay out of the plastic bottles, the better. Okay, omega-3s. Omega-3s come from a lot of stuff. Most of the stuff that we eat today in this country is rich in omega-6s. Fried foods, processed foods, the body um, can't handle all of that. Omega-6s provide a lot of inflammation. Itchy dry scalp is a result of an inflammatory condition. In addition to the fact that you may have microbiomes, bacteria, fungus, and things like that in your hair. So I'm going to recommend that you eat more things that are high in omegas, uh, avocados, salmon, um, eat, eat things that are high in antioxidants, your green leafy vegetables, your spinach, your kale, your watercress, things like that are going to be healthy for you if you're looking for a long-term solution. Um, for sulfur, take a sulfur, um, what do you call it? supplement, okay, MSM with sulfur. The powdered snowflake type loose um, 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 derivative that you can take that you can get from a really high quality health food store is going to help your nails. You want to make sure you're getting your B vitamins and things like that, your, your B complexes which come from your greens. You want to eat a variety of foods. Obviously you want your plate to represent all the different chakras. You want everything to be very colorful. That is going to really help your hair. It's going to help your skin. It's going to help you overall. Now, I'm going to name some particular essential oils that are good for inflammation, for scalp, for drying conditions, um, helping to calm and soothe the scalp. I'm going to suggest that you do extra research because I don't want this to be a long video and I didn't want to talk about essential oils at great length. You can look at my channel and you can see the various essential oil blends that I've recommended for various conditions. You can also do research. Turmeric is excellent. It's good for body inflammation. It's good for inflammation of your scalp. Clove is good. It clears out um, toxins, uh, debris, things that are causing your, your scalp to flake, especially if, the, if we're dealing with fungus microbiomes and things like that. Also uh, microbes, I don't know, microbiomes. Also um, lavender is very soothing, anti-inflammatory, antifungal is another good one. Rosemary is another good one. Here again, we're talking about non-fatty oils, okay? These are, you take two or three um, um, ounces, let's say two ounces in a little spray bottle of water and add two to three drops, okay? If you wanted to experiment with more than one, then add one or two drops of two or three oils in two to three ounces of water, okay? Shake it very, very well and spray it in those areas that seem to be mostly afflicted. Avoid the jojoba and the almond oils if you have fears about slippage and things of that nature. Although I never had that problem, I was using the Talia Wajit stuff, which I do not like, which I believe is a, was problematic for my hair. When I began making my own, my hair growth exploded. And as a matter of fact, now that I haven't been using my oils for about three to four months, which is the longest time in my entire journey, I think my hair growth may have slowed some. And that might actually be the reason why. So I miss my oils, my hair misses my oils, but I'm doing some experimenting as to the effects of that with lint, okay? Which I, I'm beginning to realize there's not as much of a relationship. The bigger relationship has to do with how often and how thoroughly, how thoroughly you actually wash the oils off and how thoroughly you try to maintain your hair from picking up debris just through the course of the day. People make a big deal about towels and pillowcases. I can tell you, um, that's gonna be the least of your problems. If you wash a lot, yeah, towels are a big deal. But if you can see stuff flaking and moving in the environment, that's happening just because you are alive and you're moving through your environment. This is where the greatest degree of the, the, the lint is or the cotton or whatever it is that you pick up in your hair is coming from. But anyway, so those are great essential oils. So long-term solutions, diet, essential oils. Essential oils are going to work with the internal constitution of your hair, scalp, follicles, roots, so forth and so on. It's going to penetrate and it's going to work on a cellular level, a systemic level to help with this as well as topically. So those are long-term solutions. Um, ACV, apple cider vinegar, number three. Apple cider vinegar is a great way to help deal with itchy, itchy scalp. 
My recommendation would be to fill a dropper into about one, one and a half ounces of water, spray it in those areas. You can also use one part water to one part uh, apple cider vinegar. I would really say one part water to two parts, um, no, two parts apple cider vinegar to, to, gosh, one part apple cider vinegar to two parts water. Shake it up really well, spray it in your hair, let it sit five to seven minutes, and then rinse. It has a strong smell, so you want to make sure you rinse. Um, and I didn't mention this before. If you don't want to use the, the, the spray bottle approach for your essential oils, put them inside your shampoo, okay? You can also do that. The next thing that I wrote down, down that you could do, you can use um, witch hazel, you can use sea breeze, um, and you can use, uh, I'll get to the coconut oil later, witch hazel and sea breeze. One part water, one part uh, for sea breeze, one part water, one part sea breeze. And I'm saying start out with that first because it's gonna depend on, how, your scalp could be raw and very itchy. So you wanna dilute it initially. However, it's not necessary to dilute it long term, especially if you find that it doesn't really irritate your scalp that much. If it does, one part water, one part sea breeze, shake it up well, spray, do, 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 do. spray in your scalp, see how it feels, okay? See how it feels. You don't really have to rinse this out. That would be a choice, but you really don't have to. The apple cider vinegar, you need to rinse out. Which hazel, you don't really have to rinse out either. Which hazel is going to be, um, just take it, put it in a little bit of spray bottle. You can add a little bit of water if you so choose. It's not really necessary. Which hazel is very mild, but you can add a little bit of water. So you'd have two parts with ha witch hazel to one part water. So you're going to add half the amount of water that you would have in terms of witch hazel. You can add a few essential oils to this as well. The other thing that you can do is you can spray directly into the area on your scalp and you can just rub in the witch hazel and the sea breeze you want to massage anything that you're going to put in your hair that you massage is going to be more effective anyway so massaging it can be uh very instrumental so those are are two other things that you can do keep in mind that um with any oils that you use they may cover up and create more debris but not necessarily solve the problem especially if they are not medicinal in nature or naturally antiseptic or naturally anti-inflammatory jojoba oil is naturally healthy it has some anti-inflammatory properties the same thing with avocado oil and any of the fatty essential oils if you venture out and you want to use fatty essential oils um, as well try the coconut oil and even if you are opposed to putting oil in your hair it doesn't have to be a lot okay it can be a little bit that you place on your fingers that you just gently rub into your scalp. It doesn't have to be much more than what your scalp would naturally emit. What I'm talking about, your, 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 your loctician may not be recommending for you, which I disagree with. And my, I, I know my locks are healthy and long and, and beautiful. And I like I told you, my, my, my issues with everything I've done to my hair, I've dyed it about seven, eight, nine times. Um, although I'm taking a break from dye and it's extremely healthy and I've always used oils because my hair needed oils and I like the way it feels. Granted, it's drier now than ever because I'm cutting back on oils, uh, almost not using them at all, sometimes not putting anything in it at all. But my advice to you really is if somebody is, has told you not to use any oil on your scalp and you listen to that individual, and you're still feeling as though your scalp needs something, that's your scalp telling you what it needs. Everybody's journey is different. You need to learn how to listen to your inner voice. Put something on your scalp and give your scalp some relief. There is no point in going around feeling uncomfortable, itching, feeling like you wanna just ooh, claw your hair because you're listening to someone who does not know the unique needs of what your scalp is actually needing or they have not worked with natural hair long enough to recognize that each person's needs are different and you can still maintain your locks and not have to deal with slippage provided that you do things in moderation. So take little steps, take a little section of your hair and just experiment. 
and just see how that particular area responds to it. And, and, and then make your decisions accordingly because really it's a personal journey and the more that you begin to work with your hair and trust yourself, the better your outcomes are actually gonna be. The other oil I wanted to mention that's very soothing to the scalp that I didn't mention before is peppermint oil. Peppermint oil. Keep in mind you never, tea tree oil I think I mentioned too, keep in mind with any of these essential oils that I mentioned, rosemary, turmeric, peppermint oil, clove oil, lavender oil, um, even a little bergamot oil, and gosh, frankincense is wonderful. I'm just not giving you all this. Frankincense deals with my wrinkles up at the top of my forehead. I'm not giving you all of them because this is not a, a video about essential oils, and I really do. If you watch the two videos, I'm going to link in the description with my Miracle Shampoo and my Miracle Grow oils, you will find that many of the ladies who have used those, who've commented, are so happy with the way their hair feels that my suggestion to you is to embrace a longer term um, solution for your hair care needs and for your scalp needs, something that's going to nurture and nutritionalize your entire hair hair care regimen and, and actually benefit you long term as it relates to your sister locks or your traditional locks or whatever it is that you're using. Um, so yeah, the peppermint oil is, is going to be good. And as I said, with any of these oils, you can put them in two ounces of water, a few drops each, shake it very well, use it in your hair, see how your hair responds. You can also put it in your shampoo. I, I actually think it's a better idea to use it in a spray water bottle if you choose to add just a tiny bit of um, fatty oil like almond oil, grapeseed oil, a uh, little bit of um, jojoba oil, whichever other oil you decide to use. You can add a little bit of that in your spray water bottle. The other option would be for you if you're a little bit braver and you want to go kind of go out a little bit more and your loctician is, 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 is asking you not to, but you know your scalp needs a little bit more than that, then I'm going to suggest one or two ounces of your particular oil that you decide to use and drop some rosemary in there, a little bit of lavender. Um, if you like peppermint, I uh, tech, I, I actually personally do not like peppermint oil. It does not resonate well with me, so I don't use it. But there is a repertoire of different oils, a myriad of different oils that you can use for your hair that are going to be healthy and give you the results that you need. So be willing to experiment. You want to look for oils that are anti-inflammatory, that are anti-microbial, which means they fight uh, bacterial that have antiseptic qualities that are soothing and calming to your scalp. For some people, cloves can be a little strong. If you're first experimenting with cloves, don't use any more than one to two drops in a two ounce amount of fatty oil, like I mentioned before, whether it's the the um, 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 avocado or whatever else it is you decide to use. Now you can use the bottle that has a pore spout and you can run it through here, but it's going to put more oil on your scalp than you actually need. So you can put a little bit on your fingertips and you can massage it in after, of course, having really, really, really uh, shaken the, the tube or the container or the bottle that you actually have your... Um, your essential oil blend, oil blend in. But for me, that has been my key. Essential oils, both fatty and non-fatty oils, have been the key to my overall lock health. I make um, no bones about that. I started using oil from the very beginning because my loctician suggested that I use oils and I was actually against that in the beginning. But she knew best because outside of the picking that I do with my own locks, picking cotton and unraveling my ends, which I choose to do because I like my ends to be loose, my hair, I will tell you right now, without all of the picking, my hair, and I just cut this lock the other day, you can see the straight end. I cut it because it was this much longer than everything else. My locks probably would all be this length in the front had I not been constantly taking them out, monitoring the fat ends and all the pieces that didn't look uniform and just doctoring my hair up so much. But fundamentally, my hair is super healthy even after the multitude of dyeing that I've done. And I attribute that not only to drinking quality water, and even though I eat some junk, I still have a pretty decent eating habit. I mean, I don't eat a ton of junk, but it's the water that I drink. 
I drink about three of these a day. I've been doing this for years, okay? I think that that helps my skin. I can tell when my skin is not hydrated well and doesn't bounce back as much. So that and my essential oil blends are my go-to things for scalp issues. I don't necessarily feel like you need to use tea, uh, sea breeze or witch hazel, but there's nothing wrong with using those if it's convenient for you and you don't feel comfortable using essential oils. But these are definitely some go-to things that you can do right away to help with your dry scalp. Hopefully this video brought you some sense of um, a greater sense of awareness. Hopefully you feel more comfortable. And, and more than anything else, I hope that you realize that you can do something about the dry scalp and that you don't have to be suffering. There's no need for you to be suffering. You, I don't care what your loctician says and, and I love them and everything else. And you, you love them too because you're paying them and you're going to them and they've given you this beautiful style. But there's no need for you to be suffering. There's no need for you to be suffering. If your scalp is itching, your scalp is saying, I need help, I need something from you. If your legs were itching, and you had irritated skin somewhere else on your body, you'd do something about that, right? You wouldn't, you would not address that and just keep putting water on it, spraying water on it, which oftentimes can actually make it worse. You would actually be looking for a solution. So I encourage you to look for a solution that works for you, that makes you happy, and that gives you a cessation of symptoms from itchy, dry scalp. Tanisha Ali, Butterfly Transformations, getting you out of your cocoon and into your wing. Thank, th into your wings. Thank you, perfect people and beautiful butterflies. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, comment. Please send your love. I'm sending out much love to you. If you want to give back, give back in the form of a donation to my cash app if you want or a donation by thumbs up or subscribing, okay? Getting out of your wings and into your cocoon, like I said, and connecting you to the vision of who you truly are. And if you like my spirit and my vibe, go to my Butterfly Transformations YouTube channel and subscribe there where we dialogue and discourse about more spiritual topics and topics that have to do with doing your inner work, clearing your energy, Reiki healing, balancing your chakras, working on your third eye, um, improving your sense of intuition, moving your life forward, getting clarity, up leveling your mindset, healing your energetic and emotional blocks, and manifesting abundance. You can see me in the description. Bye!